What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Mike, full-time media seller, Amazon, eBay. Another fun-filled week of what we're listing on eBay, what we're selling on eBay, what we're listing on Amazon, what we're selling on Amazon. We have standard buys waiting to go live from the thrift stores. It's not really live, but my, my scouter is out there this week as well. And today's topic is a good one. Where has all the profitable inventory gone, right? We think about this all the time. The main hurdle a lot of people have is finding profitable items to resell. Now this is kind of a, it's a topic because it really depends on your business model, right? What is a profitable item to you might not be a profitable item to me or vice versa. So we kind of get in this wishy-washy mindset of, I can't find anything. There's nothing out there in my thrift stores. There's nothing out there in my Goodwills, my Salvation Armies, my bins. I don't even have a bins. I only have five thrift stores. How can I make this work? It is an exciting topic, but we're jumping into things. The YouTube comment of the week. So last week's video, we talked about resellers, you, me, you, me. Are we stealing from the poor? This is kind of like, it's not really a sensitive topic, right? But it is important because I think we've all kind of dealt with some kind of like somebody mumbling under their breath or uh, just in general. So YouTube comment of the week comes from Miss Lachey. She is a reseller. She has a YouTube channel. She's like a, a shining light in the reselling community. Super nice. She commented on last week's video about stealing from the poor. In this situation, you got one or two things going on, ignorance or jealousy. It's funny to me when people try to disguise their jealousy as righteous indignation. Lady just jelly because she thinks you're getting something she wants. I seriously doubt she's concerned about poor people. Next time, ask her where's the soup kitchen she operates so you can volunteer. It's so true, right? So if you didn't watch the video last week, I had a lady talking trash behind me and she also was a reseller of cookbooks on eBay and basically made herself to seem like a saint, but I was the devil because I have a little Bluetooth scanner and I sell on Amazon and I'm charging the market price for things. I mean, Lachey summed it up right there. These people live in their own fantasy worlds, can't handle reality, wanna seem like you know they're God's gift to the universe. So that was the YouTube comment of the week. I appreciate Lachey supporting the channel. She's always hanging in the premieres. And uh, yeah, like I said, she has a channel, so go check her out. All right, breaking news. I have somebody live on the scene outside of a thrift store. Yes, all right, we're gonna throw it out to him. See, I mean, is there anything to find? I don't know, let's see what this guy has to say about it. Take us away. All right, my boss wanted me to record this outside, but it's like 50 mile per hour wind gust. It's like 30 degrees, so. The hell with that guy, right? You know, you know, you guys don't know how he treats me, right? He just gives me 10 bucks, says, here, go to these stinky, smelly thrift stores all day and scan stuff so he can steal from the poor and make money. Anyways, what did I get from the Goodwill for Michael, my boss? We got some DVDs. Um, a funny thing with the DVDs, and it's funny, I even told Deb this. Anything that's like kind of cheesy-esque, like, I don't even know how you would call it, like almost XXX kind of stuff, right? Like Pam Anderson, Nicole Kidman, like this stuff is always worth money. Listen, I'm not judging anybody, but I tell you, if you ever see the stuff from the 80s, the 70s, even the early 90s that has like bombshells on the cover and they're not wearing a bunch of clothes, right? Scan those. That is my tip today for you all. Um, I got to get into the next store here. The guy, he just texts me and calls me all day. Yeah, I'm out here. I'm doing the best I can, dude. He just, it's nonstop with him. No money is never enough for that man. So I just wanted to give you that little tip. This was from the Greedy Will, right? $2.99 per DVD. So we are cleaning up on them. We got two books as well. Um, this one, CD, $1.99, Jurassic World soundtrack. I'm a big Jurassic Park fan. The new ones suck, right? I mean... I don't know, it's, just, it's with most things. The new stuff sucks. Soundtracks, Jurassic Park, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I mean, I wish I lied to you and led you all astray, but 
I'm out here killing the CD game as well, so hopefully he appreciates me. I gotta get a next thrift store, I appreciate y'all. Back to you, boss, please don't fire me, I'm begging you. I got cats to feed. All right, listen, I try to tell this guy, record something outside, right? At least, uh, like, make it seem like you're actually out there outside of a thrift store. He's complaining it's too cold. We give him like a $500 jacket and that guy's still, whatever. I guess I should be grateful that he's actually out there scanning stuff for me. So, I mean, he did find some stuff, right? I, I think there is some validity that you can find an item in every single store you can, you know, basically shop in, whether that's thrift stores, grocery stores, gas stations, you probably could find something profitable to resell on Amazon or eBay. I, I, I firmly believe that. So I also asked this question over in the members discord, right? Through the membership on YouTube, we got a little discord here and I got in the habit of asking the topics to basically, you know, people that are, have media businesses. And the best one, I guess, all right, it's too late. I already said the best one, right? So everybody else that responded, that's already a channel member. Yours was not the best. Yosef's was, he said, all the profitable items are out there. You have to get up and go get it. There's likely more items to source than you have money to buy. I think this is 100% correct. There are so many items. Listen, I got thousands of books sitting here that are not good for my business, but might be good for somebody else's business. You got to get up. You got to get out there. You got to put in the work saying there ain't nothing when you ain't out there hustling. I mean, you of course there ain't nothing because <laughs> you ain't even out there to find out if there's anything. But the easy way is just saying, hey, uh, there's nothing out there. You can't pro resell and profitability does not exist in 2024 and it's only going to get worse. Right. So I think, you know, that's a good shout out by Yosef. And listen, this man, I'm going to give you a little backstory, right? He lost the buy box on Amazon. Did he quit? Did he stop going out sourcing? You know what he did to get the buy box back? He said, I'm gonna send in more items than I ever have. And what happened? He magically got the buy box back. He's rocking and rolling. Bet on yourself, put in the work. You're gonna get the results. You're gonna get everything you need from that. So what do we sell on eBay? Buckle up. Everybody take a seat if you're standing. I know I sold three items on eBay over the weekend. Listen, I don't want to say I'm an eBay guru and I'm working on an eBay course in the background, but three sales when I'm listing one a week, could you guys make me? I mean, woo, watch out. I'm coming for everybody. Nobody's safe out there. What did we sell? First up, we sold J.S. Bach, Sacred Songs from... <laughs> Yeah, right. And all you in the comments are going to be like, yeah, dude, I know how to pronounce that. Like, yeah, sure. You Googled it. You hit the little sound button so it plays in your ear. J.S. Bach, sacred songs from Shamilis Geisenbuch, low by Bach Concordia published. I have no idea what this thing is, and I don't have it to show. Uh, we got snow last week, right? I pull up to the storage unit. They didn't plow the storage unit. I had to park outside by the road, walk into the storage unit to get my orders. Listen, I was so I was so heated, I was so pissed off because the amount of money you pay for the storage unit, you expect it to be plowed. It wasn't like right after the snow either. It was like later, later, later in the day, six to eight hours after the snow, this place still wasn't plowed. Um, so I, I stormed in here, grabbed my orders and left. This was a music sheet book, you know, kind of like one of these looking guys. Sheet music is really good. I highly recommend scanning it, especially on eBay, you know, because a lot of this stuff, there's no ISBNs, right? This is before the time of ISBNs. A lot of this stuff is worth money, right? And Shamilis, guys in buck, yeah, thanks for the 20 bucks. Next up, Tyler Perry signed. You guys know I talked about this one. I forget when I listed this last week or the week before. I listed at 35, I lowered it to 25, sold basically the same day I lowered it 10 bucks out the door. Not too bad, somebody will appreciate it, right? I get this stuff for free, usually in my library pickups or I pay like 50 cents for it. So if I turn 50 cents into 15 bucks, I do that thousands of times a year. You know, I basically get rich doing it that way. All right, the last thing we sold are three items. Kabuki Quantum Fighter, that was the Nintendo game I showed you guys. We sold that for 20 bucks as well. We might have took an offer, I don't know. 
I can't even, I don't even know how the eBay app works. So anyways, we'll just say it's 20 bucks. Get it out the door. I paid a dollar for that as well. Three sales on eBay. Watch out Tekken Sports. I'm coming for the number one spot. I'm listing one a week. You don't want me to start listing two a week because then, you know, whoo, three sales turns into six sales and then I'm rich and retired. I'm just kidding. All right. So that covers the eBay sales. What did I list on eBay, right? You guys make me list something every single week. It's like torture, right? You're, you're all texting me all week. What are you going to list this week, Mike? Where are you gonna, what kind of junk are you going to list this week on eBay? Well, I got what I listed right over here. We have 1965 Dune Book Club Edition. Um, I kind of learned a little bit about this. There's gutter codes. I don't even know what a gutter code means. Uh, I did look up at other eBay listings to kind of see like what, where do you even find the gutter code? Like what is a gutter code? Um, and then there's like different dust jackets. There's like a 1681 here um, on the bottom of the dust jacket. Um, some of them have it on the back. <laughs> Listen, I learned way too much about this book listing this thing before I started recording today. Um, believe it or not, this is actually a really good seller. I listed it for $99.99, best offer. Whatever offer comes in, I'm taking it. <laughs> I got this from my library pickup over here. You can see it's a mess again. As always, I get my library pickups once a month. This was in there, so I'm into this for $0.00. I'm not a huge Dune fan. Uh, I know a lot of people, I don't know, it's not my cup of tea, right? Nothing against it, but I do believe this will sell over the weekend, so I'm actually going to pack this and take it home with me because, like I said, I'm taking the first offer I get on this. So um, instead of coming out because we are going to get snow again tonight, I'll pack this up. Pretty cool book if you're into Dune um, and highly collectible, right? When you when you go look this up, you'll see more sold than listed. That's when you know you got something good, especially when you see a decent price. It is in pretty good condition, too. It's not too beat up. Um, I took like 20 pictures of it. I do like the fact that eBay does allow you to take more photos now. Um, not that I do it for everything, but with something like this, it's highly collectible. People want to see the ins and outs, right? The dust jacket off the book, the picture of the book without the dust jacket picture. You know, listen, you're all eBay experts, not me. I just try to, I act like an expert when it comes to eBay. By no means necessary do I tout myself as an eBay expert. <laughs> That's what we listed on eBay. We are... We're chugging right along, right? Where's all the profitable stuff? I. This is a hard pill for me to swallow. I don't, I'll never be able to swallow it, right? Because if I look at my business a year ago, one full year ago, I was buying stuff that was four dollars profit, right? I go to a store, scan this. I'm gonna make four dollars. I'm gonna pay a dollar. I'm gonna buy this and send this into Amazon. This year, my profit triggers have gone up. I'm going to the same stores. I'm finding better items. Is it just luck? Is it just because? I don't think it is. I think it's about reps. With Amazon, how many items are you scanning? With eBay, how many items are you looking up? How much knowledge do you have in that big head of yours, right? It's not. There's no luck in reselling. You create luck through hard work. I firmly believe that. And I do think every Goodwill... Every Salvation Army, every Savers, every Bins, every mom and pop shop has profitable items to resell on eBay and Amazon. I can't tell you the last time, it's been years, that I walked into a store and left with nothing, like zero, no items. Yes, go into a thrift store, it's not worth your time if you only find one or two items, but you should be tracking your sources to know which ones produce, how often you can go to them, this, there's so much more to resell on them just showing up randomly at a thrift store. And I think this topic kind of makes you dive into, okay, what are my sources producing? How often can I go to my closest Goodwill? If it sucks, maybe I go once a month, once every two months. What about my better route? You gotta run routes. You can't have three thrift stores. You gotta have 50 thrift stores if you're gonna rely on thrift stores. There's so much that goes into this question. And I think a lot of the crying comes from the people that well, I went to my three thrift stores today and I found nothing. Well, you need a whole lot more than three thrift stores if you're planning on having any kind of reselling business, right? We all know everybody out here that has built your business up. Yes, you can have one really good source that maybe you get an infinite amount of inventory from. But for most of us, that's not the case. Most of us go to the lowest hanging fruit with it. Which it's just the thrift stores. I'm here to tell you, have conversations at thrift stores. Get in the back rooms. This week, I literally, I just been in the back room of one of my locations scanning stuff that's never gonna see the light of day. Nobody's ever seen it or touched it. D 
these relationships, and every single one of you can have these. Listen, I shaved my wig, right? So I'm back to being bald. I'm not pretty. I mean, maybe I'm a little char 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 charis charismatic. Chariz maybe I have a little bit of charisma, right? So I can go in and be like, yo, what's up? Yo, you, you, you got any crappy media in the back? But a simple conversation at checkout can change your business. I stand by it as cheesy as it sounds because I know not only me, there's plenty of other people out there. One conversation. Hey, can I, do you have any more of these items in the back? Can I buy these items in bulk from you? All of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. You're in two or three back rooms. Your business has exploded overnight. You can't even come up with the money to buy all the stuff that's out there. Kind of like Yosef said, there's so much out there, we ain't even got the money to cover the cost of buying every single profitable thing within a 100 mile radius. And you have to be willing to look outside of your immediate area. I'm running thrift routes and that over an hour one way, right? You gotta be willing, if you're gonna sink your teeth into this and get serious, then you gotta get serious and you gotta be willing to put in the drive time that comes with finding profitable items if you're gonna rely on thrift stores, which most of us do. So, we got the eBay junk out of the way. I know, I'm basically number one eBay seller now for video games, sheet music, and uh, signed autograph books. Amazon, what we selling on Amazon? All right, I got three sales for you. First up, we have American Horticulture Society Plant Propagation, the fully illustrated plant by plant manual of practical techniques. I know, everybody snap your fingers. I pronounced all of that correctly, right? It might've been a little bit slowed down so I could read, but I, I, I said it all right. These books kind of get passed up on, right? So I think about those big coffee table size plant books, even like the Home and Decker books. I've sold those as well. I mean, this book alone, we sold for $44.42. Profit was 28 bucks and 61 cents. We're into this, I think, for $1.50 or two bucks. We made $25 in profit. All we did was scan it at a thrift store, throw a label on it, send it into Amazon, and this sold pretty quick. It was ranked 403,000 in books, which is a pretty solid sell-through rate rank when it comes to books. Next up, book set here. I don't come across book sets as much as I used to. Um, Ultimate Nancy Drew Girl Detective Collection Number Two, books nine through 16 box set. We sold it for $29.41. Profit was only $16.57. That's just because it's a heavier item. It's a larger item. So you pay more in fees. We did pay up for this. We paid $5 for this. I remember this one specifically because like I said, I don't come across box sets like I used to. So we made 10 bucks after fees, not too shabby. I do get all the time. How do I pack like a box set of books? I don't have any here specifically, but uh, you just say this is your box set of books. Uh, it's usually in the slip cover, right? If you don't have the slip cover, I'd probably poly bag it. But if you have the slip cover, I usually just put masking tape. You could do like painter's tape or masking tape. It's not gonna damage the slip cover. For all you nerds out there, that's what, you're gonna destroy the books, dude. I promise you the masking tape will not damage the slip cover. It will not damage the books. Um, yeah, I just slap masking tape on it so they don't fall out. Um, if, the, if the barcode's on the bottom of the slip cover, I'll cover that with a 30 up and I will put my Amazon label on the back. I think it's there's a better chance of your item not getting lost and actually getting scanned at the warehouse if the barcode just on the back and not on the bottom because listen, if you're working in an Amazon warehouse, you're scanning in all these items, you want it to be as easy as possible. So if there's ever a barcode on the bottom of anything, I always cover it up. I put it on the back of the item every single time. That's why Amazon loves me, right? All right, we got one more item we sold. This was a CD, $29.99. Profit was $20.09 for our children, 10th anniversary edition. This had like some famous musicians singing songs, I guess. If you see $29.99, you've been around long enough, you know, I was the only FBA offer. If it ends in 99, I can charge up 30 bucks out the door. You can't beat it. $20 profit, I'm probably into the CD for a dollar. Uh, if I could convince you all just to 
take selling media seriously on Amazon and kind of just, whether you're doing eBay, whether you're doing eBay and Amazon, if you take selling media seriously on Amazon, you can make a shit ton of money. It's stupid money. I mean, guys, I just scan stuff. I'm nothing special. And every secret I have, I put out on this channel, probably to my not beneficial, right? Because if you guys have all the secrets, then I got no secrets and I got no secret sauce, but it's all there for the taking. It's crazy. So now what are we sending into Amazon this week? Let me get my screen recorded. I got a little bit of everything. And one of the items I didn't even find. Somebody else did. All right. I guess we'll start off with that item. Me and Deb go for walks at a local park here, um, and they got a little free library. Here comes all, stop stealing from the free library. <laughs> Haters gonna hate, all right? And if you think me taking one book, you don't wanna know what some of the people over in the Discord do with the free libraries. I mean, <laughs> Deb found this, and she seen this, and I didn't, and I was sitting there staring in the little three-shelf library. I'm like, what? I don't see nothing. And she's like, there's Warcraft, right? Uh, Warcraft book. It's a kid's book. Warcraft. A is for Azeroth. I probably pronounced that wrong. I was not a big World of Warcraft person. Uh, so yeah, this was sitting in there for free. D is for dwarves. Let's see what else we got. G is for gnomes. Anyways, how much is it worth? It would help if I had my scanner on, right? So shout out to Deb. Listen, she wears glasses. I don't. I probably should wear glasses, but that's a whole nother video for a whole nother time. This will make you $7.49. Our buy cost was free. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's a free little library. I don't take advantage of them. I have lots of them. There's a website. You can just Google free little libraries near me. There's a website that pulls them all up. Don't get crazy with it, right? I don't need to see any of you on the nightly news man or woman's cleaning out free libraries and all the libraries have nothing but Nora Roberts books and Tom Clancy books now. <laughs> Don't be that person. All right, so that was a book. Now I got one DVD and two CDs. We'll do the DVD first. Cheap Trick, From Tokyo to You, live in Japan. Um, I have no, I know who Cheap Trick is. I don't know what songs, let me see if I know any of these songs. Yes, that's what I thought. I knew this song before I looked, okay? I want you to want me. I want you to want me. I knew that song, all right? So uh, any type of concert, live concert stuff, you always wanna scan. This is showing red. We paid 50 cents for this, so this is actually a green. Uh, no used FBA, Amazon's on the listing at 1398. We'll probably price down around 1250. We'll make a little bit of 450 after fees. Not too shabby. Cheap trick, thank you, I appreciate it. Now we got some CDs. Uh, another one I can't pronounce. I don't know why I do this to myself. I just need to start picking easy stuff. Sergey Rachmanov, Rash Rashmanov, I don't know. The symphonies, and I'm not even going through that. Not even gonna pronounce that. All you smart asses out there can try to pronounce that. Um, this is a good find. $12.80, we're into this for 50 cents or a buck. This will sell, sells more than once a week at $22. Can't beat it. Make sure all the discs are inside of these things and make sure you're scanning every single one of these multiple CD sets. And the last thing we are sending in, Thumbelina, uh, believe it or not, Don Bluth. I don't know why this is worth so much money, but here we are. Sells a little bit more than once a month, about every three and a half weeks. You're looking at $25 profit after fees, not too shabby. Original motion pictures, soundtrack. I tell you to scan them every single damn time. I make your life so easy as a media seller on Amazon. There's nothing else I can do for you. The profitable stuff's out there. No matter where I go, no matter what thrift store I walk into today, I'm leaving with something that's profitable. Might not, might not always be a full Ikea bag. Sometimes it might be a handful of stuff. Other times it's a trunk full of stuff, but you gotta get out there and put in the reps. Make sure you're out there understanding your sources, tracking your sources, how profitable they are, have routes, 
understand your routes, how often you're running your routes, different routes, have conversations when you're checking out. Don't be scared to tell people that you sell Thumbelina CDs to support your, your family, right? Your wife, your husband, your cats, your dogs, your ferrets, your sloths, if you have a pet sloth, whatever you have, lizards, fish. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing, don't be ashamed of what you do, right? I mean, this is a business. I, I'm proud of, you know, what I built from the ground up. And we all should be kind of the same way, right? I mean, look at when we started, when we decided to listen to some crazy person on YouTube. Oh, yeah, you can make money flipping this online. And, and now look where we all gotten, right? Whether you're part-time or full-time. You've made hundreds, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in this business. So have conversations, be vocal, and be proud about what you do. So that's going to do it for the video. I appreciate you watching. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more useful videos. Bye-bye.